Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Today I would like to return to the fact that the Sun possesses a real lattice. In earlier videos you learned that the photosphere is likely to be comprised of type 1 metallic hydrogen which adopts the same hexagonal planar structure as graphite. Photospheric material should not be highly metallic but more like a semi-metal. As we move further below the photosphere and enter the convective zone, solar material becomes more compressed and therefore more metallic. This conclusion arises from theoretical studies involving the hexagonal form of metallic hydrogen. I refer to this form as type 2 metallic hydrogen which is also hexagonal planar in nature. It is likely that this is the same material which is found in sunspots and in faculi often associated with sunspot formation. The conclusion that type 1 and type 2 metallic hydrogen assume the same structure as graphite has interesting structural and physical consequences not only for the sun but for many of the other stars as well. First, the outer sun must be viewed as somewhat layered in nature. We saw evidence for this in the coronal mass ejections and in the increasing velocity of transverse waves on the photosphere in association with flares in this video. Type 1 and type 2 material should also allow for the introduction of non-hydrogen atoms between the hexagonal planes, an area known as the intercalate region. Such regions also exist in graphite and that is why graphite filters are so efficient. They trap atoms and molecules in the intercalate regions which can form between the hexagonal planes. Once deposited, intercalate atoms have great freedom of motion within the intercalate region. However, they cannot move easily across the hexagonal planes. In a sense, they become trapped. Note that whenever a hexagonal structure like graphite is found, it is possible that intercalate regions exist. These regions can occur rather regularly and frequently within the material, or they can be more rare, scattered and infrequent. In the liquid metallic hydrogen solar model, when new elements are synthesized, it is proposed that they enter the intercalate regions. These atoms are unable to stay within the hydrogen hexagonal planes as to do so would destroy the quantum mechanical advantages of the hydrogen lattice relative to maintaining electronic conduction bands. As a result, helium and heavier atoms are thought to build up in the intercalate regions over time. Now what happens as a result of all this? At the poles, this solar model advances that the intercalate regions tend to be aligned perpendicular to the solar surface. This is in keeping with these helioseismic results from NASA. You see here how the lines of flow are perpendicular to the surface at the poles, but they are parallel to the surface at the equator. Consequently, at the poles, it is easy to envision that the intercalate atoms can be expelled from the solar body when solar pressure acts on them. They simply escape by following the channels provided by the intercalate regions. Given that the atoms can move freely within the planes of the intercalate regions, it is easy to visualize how positioning such planes orthogonal to the solar surface enables non-hydrogen atoms to be expelled from the interior. When they do so, they will be accompanied by overlying hydrogen atoms and the fast solar winds will be born. However, because the intercalate atoms cannot cross hexagonal planes, any non-hydrogen atom which is made at the equator cannot easily be expelled from the sun when it is quiet. That is because in this case the hexagonal planes and the intercalate regions are oriented parallel to the solar surface. As a result, when the sun is quiet, the intercalate regions near the equator just keep building up non-hydrogen atoms. However, when the sun becomes active, the orientation is altered, the intercalate regions slowly buckles upwards and now the intercalate atoms can be released. The migration of coronal holes towards the equatorial region during solar activity and the associated fast solar winds 
is one manifestation of such a process, the formation of sunspots is another. As such, in the liquid metallic hydrogen solar model, the sun goes active in order to degas its equatorial intercalate regions and release non-hydrogen atoms. This is an important idea relative to accounting for solar activity and fast solar winds. In this regard, note that in the standard solar model, no reasonable explanation for solar activity exists. Why would a ball of gaseous plasma without structure ever become active? In any event, you can learn more about the importance of the intercalate region in the sun and the stars in this paper. Lattice structure can be a key determinant of behavior of an object. For those interested in the electrical properties of the sun, type 2 material should be highly conductive in the planes because the presence of electronic conduction bands exists in this region. Conversely, solar material should be insulating in the intercalate zones. This can be useful in current flow and dynamo behavior within the sun. Organized electrical currents require both conductors and insulators. This is a significant advantage of the liquid metallic hydrogen solar model, which is not shared by gaseous models. In closing, I hope that you enjoyed this brief outline of intercalate regions and the central role they might play in the sun and the stars. That being said, do continue to support me through your views and likes. Subscribe, promote the channel, and stick with me as we look more closely at the sun, the stars, and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on our next video.